You're all excited. I'm excited. Gonna play some Stationers. I'm K. So what we're gonna do is we're putting together a little tutorial on how to do an automatic melting system. Um, we have a, we're just outside our furnace room. We have a couple mining belts full of a couple different ores. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our drop off room and we're gonna drop off our items inside the little, you know, inside the little system. Now the, the ore is going to go into our system. It's going to go into different, you know, shoot systems. It's going to also get, you know, put into different furnaces. Um, not based on material. We've decided to go for a speed run. So smelt as much stuff as fast as possible. Uh, there was a button right next to the little shoot system that was started, but before we do all that, I'm going to walk you through the overall how it, how it works, the logic behind it. There's a couple writers, a couple readers, a couple compare units. Um, basically, we're going to just keep checking the state of the arc furnace and then use that state to do what we, you know, whatever we need to do. So I've built a little mock-up. We have an arc furnace, a little conveyor, uh, our shoot output and then for the just the time being I put a shoot input so I can show you how the entire thing works. So let's switch off our belts. This one's empty. Alright, so let's kick some stuff into here. Alright, so I've just done little balls of one just to, to show you the quickness of everything. So we have our, in fact, let's go ahead and take out our screwdriver. All right, so we have our logic reader. What this reader is doing is taking the input is the arc furnace. And what we're looking for is the import slot occupant. So basically we're reading if anything's inside here. So if something's inside there, it's going to be a one. Nothing's inside there, it's a zero. At that point, we basically have a compare unit and what we're doing is we're comparing the logic reader to a memory chip. Um, I'm going to show you two ways that we could do this. You could do it either way. Um, I did this one less than with the memory chip program to one. Uh, so basically if the state of the arc furnace, which in this case is zero since nothing's inside it, if zero is less than the memory unit, which is one, then the compare unit is obviously going to turn on. So the state of the compare unit is going to be one. At that point, we can do, it's telling our system that something needs to happen. So we have our logic writer here. The logic writer is going to use the input of the compare unit and the output of the shoot uh, output. So the shoot outlet is going to do something whenever that hits one. Now, because these are monetary switches, basically, it's only going to do it one time. It's not going to keep doing it. Um, and what we want it to do is open. So it's only going to open the shoot one time. It's going to close the shoot after that. Now, in order for this entire thing to work, and this is the key point, before you set this logic circuit up, you have to build a logic circuit just for the shoot outlet and program it to lock. If the shoot outlet is not locked, then this will not work. Because what we want the default state of the outlet to do is to be closed, to stay closed and not open up. And since I threw in four balls of ore, it didn't kick any of it out. Whereas if your shoot's not locked, it's going to just keep spitting it out. So we're controlling the open and close of the shoot. Uh, so whenever the compare unit switches from 0 to 1, it triggers the writer. The writer switches from 0 to 1, which opens and closes the chute. Now, because it's a monetary, you do have to have a start button at the very beginning of the entire cycle. All right, so down here I have a writer. Uh, it's a batch writer, but obviously 
for your I did that as a batch rider just for I I used a batch rider instead of a regular rider. Um a regular rider is perfectly fine to use. I just didn't switch uh my mouse wheel when I placed this. Uh so we have our regular rider. Um and basically we're reading this logic reader. And if something's inside there, our output's the furnace, and we're going to tell it to activate. So what this is going to do is basically, as soon as something goes in there, the arc furnace turns on. So we have our little button right here. Uh, the button is connected to another rider. This one will need to be a batch rider if you have more than one arc furnace. Um, so this one is supposed to be a batch rider and what it's going to is the shoot outlet and the state that we want is to open it so when i push this button it's going to eject a ball of ore the ball of ore is going to go into here it's going to automatically turn on the furnace and then it's just going to keep cycling so once it kicks out obviously it opens back up another ball of ore keeps going and it's just basically a completely automated system so it's push button start but after that it's walk away all right so we're going to go into our well let's before we do that let's go ahead and empty the rest of our go ahead and empty the rest of our items inside inside here oh i don't want to smelt that this is actually tied into our entire recycling system, so whatever's not ore is going to automatically get recycled. So the last thing I want is to put something in here that we're not going to actually, uh, yeah, we're not going to ever see again. Uh, let's see, is this one, this one's got stuff in it. And for time reason, I'm just going to go ahead and continue in here. All right, so this is the same setup that's right there, except on a large scale. We have all of our shoot inputs that are throughout their base, um, as well as our ore drop off outside. It goes into here. It goes into the first sorter what separates want to get recycled or if it's an actual ore this one separates whether it's a smeltable ore or something like coal or reagent mix um, if it is then it sends it to our furnace room so we can you know take care of it from there so after it goes through and say it's a lump of iron so a lump of iron is going to come up here And a lump of iron is going to go into the first sorter. Now, these sorters, if you do not program a sorter, they will act like a splitter. They will split evenly. Uh, it doesn't split a ball of 50 into 25. But you put in two balls, it will make sure one goes on one side, one goes on the other side. You put in uh, six balls, three goes on one side, three go on the other side. So it splits it evenly. Because of that, we're set. So we split it into two then four different lines i have an eight furnace setup so so with an eight furnace setup what it will allow us to do is just non-stop go into the arc furnaces it will start smelting and then re-kick it out these everything gathers and right now with the current build of the game which is uh, I guess I'll have to go to the menu, menu in order to see what the build of the game is. Um, but with the build of the game right now, the junctions can sometimes kick out items instead of carrying it through. So if something enters the side of the junction, sometimes it will fall out. So I've had, uh, it seems gold does it a lot. Uh, gold will just fall out. Um, I've even had gold get deleted. 
Uh, so that's why I did copper and iron. Because of the speed of all the arc furnaces, you will need to do a chute outlet and a conveyor to kind of stagger everything before it goes into the sorting system for the ingots. So the finished ingot's going to come in here, and it's going to go through the sorting system to separate whether or not, you know, into the different stackers. Iron gets goes into one stacker, gold, copper, uh, silica, lead. Um, and then based on when those hit 500, it kicks it out. Green into the next room, uh, blue into the furnace room, uh, just with the coal and stuff so we can make our alloys. All right, so with, let's go ahead and bypass the airlock just so that we can do this quick. So we have our button here. This is our start button. Uh, there's also one outside. Uh, you will obviously need to, before you can hit the start button, let or go through the system. But once you hit the button, got to hit the button. All right, now I hit the button. Uh, once you go through the system, as you can see, everything seems to be kicking on. It will overpressurize the room. Uh, so the curtain uh, filtration system that we have, which is basically one vent supplying base air, another vent sucking it into the recycling uh, atmospherics, and then trying to get some of the pollutants and stuff out with an air scrubber. Yeah, it's kind of a little... Uh, a little wonky right now but as you can see everything's smelting and as soon as these hit zero it's going to kick out and redo everything else again with most of this being iron uh, we should get a full 500 stack of iron at least one maybe even two as you can see that worked like a dream so the actual logic of it Oh, I didn't get here fast enough. Uh, so the actual logic of it is basically the same thing you saw on the other side. It's a little blown up, a little larger version. Obviously, it's eight times as much logic system. Uh, with the base being, uh, I think we're up to over 13,000 items. Sometimes the lag spikes do happen, especially when it saves. But we have our writers for the actual furnace to activate the furnace here. The readers for the state of the furnace right here. Uh, we have our compare units that go along the top of that wall and this right here. And then the writers for the chutes. Uh, each one is programmed the exact same way as there. Um, the memory unit that I did for this, I'm using equals on the compare unit. So basically if the state of the furnace input slot is zero it's equal to the memory unit which I'm I made it a zero uh, and then that will trigger them uh, you it seemed to be a little easier to set that up being that the compare units are already defaulted at equals so I just chose to do it that way just so I wouldn't have to keep uh, you know clicking As you can see, I've already ran out of some ore in this one. A couple of them. With that said, let's go out here. There is going to be quite a bit of pollutants. So we'll let the airlock cycle. All right, so that is the automated smeltering system. I have uploaded this world save in its current situation right now uh, to the workshop. I'll be posting the link there. It may get updated a couple times. Obviously, this is our furnace room, so anything that reagent mix or anything uh, that we need will get kicked into here. And that way we can make our alloys. I was expecting to get a 500 stack of iron. Let's push the 
bypass button. Well, we're at 250 right now. And I'll combine those with the other ones later. All right. So until next time, have fun.